Welcome to What's Cooking, New Ulm. I'm Rebecca Fleiser, the dietitian with the Heart of New Ulm, and we're working on reducing and eventually eliminating heart attacks in the 56073 zip code. Today we have a great guest who has some great information about fibromyalgia. Joe, welcome to the show. Thanks. Good. Well, our recipe today is tailored for what? What is your goal of this recipe today? It's to make life easier. And what I did, uh, I had both chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. So there are so many times I was so tired, I didn't feel like cooking. And they gave me a list of foods that I was supposed to eat. So I came up with a simple way that in the morning, if you're feeling okay, uh, you can make a base where you'll have three meals done in a matter of 15 minutes. Great. So now where did you come up with these foods or who are they? Where did you come up with all the ingredients that we'll be using? Well, through the 35 doctors I saw in two okay. and a half years, mm -hmm. every single one gave me a food list. And what I did is I went through the list. So we're talking the Mayo, we're talking the University of Minnesota, we're talking chiropractors, we're talking uh, the dizziness center. They all gave me a food list. And I just cross-referenced and everyone had the same list. Great. So what were some of the symptoms that led you to this diagnosis? Um, I basically laid down in bed and everything spun. Okay. Went to my doctor and he said, I'll go away in a couple days. Well, unfortunately it didn't. The next thing you knew, um, I was exhausted. And if I didn't lay perfectly flat, my body went into convulsions. Hmm. So they got a little bit excited. They got me to a neurologist up in uh, Andover, Minnesota. And he did every test, making sure it wasn't a brain tumor, a spine tumor. Once it wasn't that, then they just did the process of elimination. Great. Well, you know, it's a great story, and you feel like you've been fully recovered. Is that correct? Yes, for over four months now. Good, good for you. Now, you will notice, too, that if you are looking at the ingredient list, all of these ingredients are going to cross over into our heart-healthy diet. Remember, those are going to be low cholesterol, low saturated fat, low sodium, and they do fit into our parameters as well. So, though we can't say what works for sure, these do fit into our criteria. So, if these are symptoms or things that you would like to try, uh, they do fit into our heart-healthy model, and we would encourage you to do so. So, Joe, let's start talking about your recipe. All right, okay. so what do we have? Well, basically for breakfast, so everything's going to be based on barley. Okay. And if, if you can't have barley, you can replace it with brown rice uh, with all these recipes. So basically we're going to start out with barley for breakfast. Okay. With that same barley, I'm making a full package of it. Uh, we are going to make a barley-based tabbouleh. And then for dinner, it's barley vegetable soup. Great. Now barley is going to be higher in fiber and it's going to have a little bit lower carbohydrate count than your regular rice or pasta. So it is a good substitution. Even if you don't have any issues with fibromyalgia, it's a good food to make that substitution with. So let's go ahead and get that in so we, okay. we get it made up. So this is a full package of instant barley and I have boiling water. So we're just going to let that start cooking. All right. And like you said, those with fibromyalgia might have fatigue throughout the day. So what we're trying to do is we're cooking in bulk today and you're preparing your food in one meal and this is going to carry you through through the next three meals. So what I'm doing now, okay, so when the barley's cooking, uh, the great thing that I do is I try to multitask. Okay. Um, and moms and dads, if you're a single parent or you say you can't, don't have time to make a nutritious meal, I'll disprove that right now. Great. Because we can make lunch and supper that everyone loves all at one time. So now when that's cooking, what I'm gonna do is plain and simple, I'm gonna make the tabbouleh. Okay. So what is tabbouleh exactly? Well, it's a, I believe it's Lebanese and it's usually a cracked wheat that's used in it and it's more of a lemon based. I don't like lemon. Okay. <laughs> Except for on my fish and lemonade. So what I did is I came up with the tomato base one instead. And uh, I said, well, let's just make it uh, where I can add it to another meal or make things simple. So I just decided to use barley. And plain and simple, it can either be a main meal or it can be a side dish. Okay. And it's been tested by my children. It's been tested by my friends who only eat steak and potatoes. So. It's approved by many people in Minnesota. Great. Now, earlier when we were discussing this recipe, Joe, you gave me a good tip for people who have fibromyalgia that might be fatigued. That, you know, we did just take the time to peel the cucumber or skin the cucumber, but you can leave that on if that's going to create a barrier for you. Yes. Remember that just increases your nutrient to intake as well. So if you want to leave it on, that's going to be just fine. And I have a funny habit. If I don't like something, I make recipes around it. Okay. So one of the things you're going to see is I use red peppers in everything. I do not like green peppers. Okay. Everyone said they taste the same. They don't to me. So I use red peppers in everything. By all means, 
if it's not in your budget to use a red pepper, use a green pepper. Sure, sure. Another substitution that can be made would be using things like quinoa or even couscous as the base of this uh, tabbouleh would be fine too. So you're going to use one cucumber. Basically, yes. Okay. Um, and a lot of this stuff, you'll, I, I advise you follow the recipe the first time and then from the recipe make modifications. Okay. Uh, whatever you like the tastes and likes and dislikes, that's always the best way I've found to make any meal. Good. Now you, you notice I'm not the fastest chopper in the world and I've done things very slow my entire life in the kitchen because I have all my digits left and that's very <laughs> important for me. Now there are some people that don't have their digits and there's some people that cook a lot quicker. Another thing you can use that I use at home from time to time is they have one of those food choppers. Sure. And that can make your life a lot easier mm -hmm. too. Right. So what we have is basically what I cut into there is uh, a half a cup of diced cucumber. Okay. And now we're gonna go into the red pepper. Right. In keeping with our second quarter of the Community Health Challenge, you're going to notice that we have some great color on the table today. Remember, our mission is color your plate, trying to find vegetables of different colors to add nutrients into the diet. So often we are stuck on the same vegetables and they, we become tired and so we decrease our vegetable intake throughout the winter. This recipe is a great opportunity to expand that and stay with your vegetables even as the fresh produce gets a little bit more difficult to come by. Yes. Now you can do a combination of peppers in here also. You can use yellow, you can use green, whatever your tastes are. I figured since the cucumbers were green, that's enough green. Right. Yeah, yellow peppers, you know, pretty well anything. Even you could throw some squash in here, whatever really you like sure. or what you have available. With our root vegetables right now, you can even add beets, uh, turnips, parsnips. Vegetables are easy to throw in based on your taste. So uh, take a poll in your house, find out what your family likes and throw them in your, in your tabbouleh. Now another big thing with children, you're going to find out that uh, if it's something new, they may not try it, have them try it. Right. Once they try it, then you, you always give them the choice of not eating it again or making the modifications from it. But what I recommend is watch your stove. <laughs> That barley really has a rich smell to it. Right. Something that you'll definitely love. And this is just a regular beef, uh, beef steak tomato. So, you know, you can pick these up or they're coming out of the garden fresh right now. Throw those in there as well. Those look actually really great. These are fantastic. And I know we're lucky in this community here. We have two very nice grocery stores. And if you don't have something, uh, if they don't have something you want, if you talk to the produce manager, mm -hmm. they will get it for you. They want you to eat healthy, they want you to be happy, and they want to work with you. So by all means, do not be shy if they that's don't right. have something. That's right. The Heart of New Elm has recently started some grocery store tours, so if that's something you're interested in as well, we can surely uh, walk you through, visit uh, in each of the departments and find out which of our grocery stores have what. You're right, all of our grocery stores do have quite a good selection, and now we've added our third grocery store with Walmart too, so you know it also increases our competition and pricing is great. So uh, New Elm is a fortunate community. Yes. Are you laughing at how slow I am yet? No, nope, not okay, yet. Good, not yet. Good, good, good. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking at these tomatoes and they look really great. And the barley does have a pretty strong smell, so um, this is, it looks like it's going to be a good recipe. So that was one diced tomato, a little bit. I, I just try to balance things out there. Sure. It's not quite a full one. And then what you throw in. Let's just add this last one real quick here. And I'm, I'm really glad to see you using the parsley. Oftentimes you'll hear me say that parsley is a lot more than a plate dressing. It's very high in nutrients. Um, it's a great flavorful uh, additive to our dishes. And so, you know, it should be used a little bit more often. So um, the fact that this recipe had parsley, I, it was a, a great thing to see. It's not just a garnish. It's not just a plate garnish. That's right. 
Then we're adding in right now three tablespoons of parsley. I like to chop this up rather small. And this really does give a lot of texture when you're eating it. It gives a lot of nice, nice flavor. And I love parsley, so I know the recipe calls for a little bit less than this, but if we have it, let's use it. Yeah, that has a definite uh, strong smell, and it, it's going to have a pretty uh, strong flavor, too. So um, as long as you like parsley, again, it's full of nutrients and a great thing to add. So, Joe, while you're chopping, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your book and your signing that you'll be having coming up here in New Ulm. Okay, it's the book. What I talk about is what I went through. I mean, from start to finish, it's all positive. Um, it's frustrating because those of you who have chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia or both, you know that people don't believe you or understand what you're going through. They think you just need sleep and, you know, you should be better, you should be able to do things. Well, family members out there, believe them. It's, it's a tough disease. And the biggest thing is being positive throughout the entire process because if you're positive, you can get better. Stay away from negativity. So I talk about the whole process, meeting with all the 35 different doctors, mm -hmm. meeting, you know, time after time thinking you have an answer and then they don't. And I know many of you have felt that frustration. So I go through that and then what I go through is the treatment that I found that worked for me. It doesn't work for everyone. Right. I've, so far in four months, I've had about 20 people worldwide, Australia, New Zealand, all over the United States, that have actually gotten better from the type of treatment I've had. Oh, good. Now, there's been others that it didn't help, but the foods they loved. Good. So, and I mean, like I said, they're heart healthy. That's a good. It's a good diet to follow anyway, um, whether or not you have fibromyalgia. So it's definitely not any kind of concocted odd diet with a, a cabbage soup for a week or anything like that. So oh goodness, that no. looks great. And the big thing, it's not a diet. It's a it's a way of eating healthy with healthy alternatives. Another thing you're going to find is uh, through the process, I basically started from scratch, figuring out because I tried everything, figuring out what. Uh, was making me sick and so I cut out all foods I started from the basics and slowly introduced foods to find out my reactions I found unfortunately that red meat makes me tired okay and I found that yeast um, also makes me tired so I cut back on that I'll have red meat once a week now okay and I'll have that all during one day a big, another big thing that I learned was do not duplicate things um, you know so don't have barley today barley tomorrow Try to have that separate every four days. Oh, great. That also makes it, if you have a slight allergic reaction, it's going to make it so that you're okay. Yeah. All right. Well, while we start finishing up this recipe, why don't we go ahead and check in with Holly and see what's new for Fit and Five. Okay. You know, one of the questions that I frequently get from exercisers, new exercisers and avid exercisers, is why am I so stinking sore after an exercise routine? What you experience 24 to 48 hours after exercise is called delayed onset muscle soreness, and it's fairly normal. If you're new to being physically active or you're an avid exerciser, you can experience delayed onset muscle soreness. New exercisers will experience, because, experience it because basically you're new to being physically active. Avid exercisers can experience it when they do something new or something different. So if you typically are a runner and you go into swim, you're going to notice that the next day your shoulders may be a little bit sore. And it's just because you're using different muscles than what you would typically use in your normal routine. It's not necessarily bad to have a DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness, but it is a little bit uncomfortable. So how can you prevent this from happening? Well, one way is a good proper warm-up. Make sure that you increase your body temperature gradually. Before you get to that peak exercise intensity, you want to warm up. You also want to cool down. Make sure that you cool the body down. You know, one thing that I see a lot of is people will finish their physical activity routine and they won't bother to stretch the muscles or do anything to slow the body down. You want to make sure to do a cool down as well. Another thing that you can do if you do experience delayed onset muscle soreness is don't sit still the next day. It's actually just going to get worse. Try and work some of that muscle byproduct out of your system by doing some type of low impact activity that requires you to move. 
If you do a proper warm up and a nice cool down, chances are your muscles won't tend to be nearly as sore the next day. Hopefully these tips will help your exercise routine be comfortable and a little less sore. With today's Fit in 5, I'm Holly and have a healthy day. Thanks, Holly. All right, Joe, let's go ahead and finish up your first recipe. Okay, um, so you serve the barley for breakfast, so it just comes out, and all you do is put that in a bowl, and you can serve it with dried apricot, fresh apricot, whatever you want, and so now breakfast is done. Now, we have our tabbouleh mix. Now what we're gonna do is stick a cup and a half of barley in there. So we have that going, and I just sort of stir it all in nice together. Look how beautiful, Yeah, that it? does look nice. Nice and vibrant. Now, some people will say you should wait till it's cool, but they didn't write the recipe I did, so I just do it all at <laughs> once to make things easy. Right. Now, what I did here is I'm gonna, you, you start out with the plain and simple uh, tomato juice, and then you're gonna add in some crushed garlic, which I did ahead of time, and then we are gonna add some nice spices here. Right. And I just wanted to point out, too, that oftentimes people will avoid drinking tomato juice. And while we don't want to drink it directly because of the high sodium level, it is being diluted in this dish. And so our sodium level is still all right with tomato juice. You can seek out those low sodium or the less sodium tomato juices as well if you have any issues with high blood pressure, fluid retention, or any other cardiac conditions. But for our regular diet, remember, a little bit is okay. So we're adding cayenne pepper. Uh, some nice, uh, some oregano, which I measured out a half of a teaspoon. And then we have dried thyme, which we're going to add also in here, another half. And now lastly, just to thin this out a little bit, what we're going to do is add a half a cup of water. Anywhere from a quarter to a half a cup of water Okay. is a nice, nice mix. And you just stir this up. Now, one of the things that I do is I usually double this recipe, and I use this for a salad dressing throughout the week. Okay. And this will keep uh, about five to six days. It's a nice alternative to the store brands, and it's going to be nice, tasty, nutritious. And in the summer, what I do is I have my own herb garden. Okay. So I use all fresh herbs. Great. But Great. in general, <laughs> Minnesota, we have about three months to do that. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is just add this to the tabbouleh. Great. Now, Joe, you had given me a great tip earlier as well. You know, you're going to be purchasing that tomato juice bottle or a water bottle. Those work as good storage containers. You don't need to go out and buy anything separate, no, correct? that's correct. I have one of those. I have several different uh, dressings that I make at my house for uh, all my salads. Okay. And that's what I use is I use the old bottles and uh, it, it's a great alternative. Great, great. Well, this looks like a great dish and it looks like it's ready to go. So what you do now, you just put it in the fridge and now you're ready for lunch. Two things I like to do, you can either serve it, eat it just out of a bowl. You can do a Belgian endive, which is sort of difficult to find at time to time. Right. Ask your grocer, they will special order it. Good. Or what you can do is put it into a half a pita. Oh, okay. That's another mm -hmm. alternative and just have sure. it as a, a sandwich. Perfect. So Perfect. that works out really good. You can smell it. Yeah, well, you can smell it from over here. It smells great. Now, lastly, so now that's the second use of the barley. Right. Now, what you do is the rest of the barley, you just leave that in the refrigerator. Okay. When it comes time for supper, it's a real simple recipe. All we're going to do is take a cup of barley, which is a little bit more than a cup in there now, but let's just make full use of that. We are going to add inside of it, um, we are going to do how many cups? We're going to uh, use two cups. Two cups of tomato juice. And then we are going to take our vegetables. You should do about two cups, but we'll just take advantage of everything that we have here. Right, we and those were just bagged frozen vegetables. They're easy to access and of low cost. So that makes for a nice uh, low cost recipe you're putting together there. Yes, and the big thing is, Eating healthy does not have to be expensive. Right, right. And now what we're going to do is heat this up, and you're going to see that it's nice and thick. Right. Well, Joe, while that heats up, why don't we go ahead and check in with Betsy and find out what's new with the Heart of Newall.
Hi, I'm Betsy Pizer with the Heart of New Home Project, and I wanted to give you an update on some Get Active events we have coming up. We just found out that every Thursday at 9 a.m. at the Senior Center, there's a Wii Bowling event. Again, it's Thursdays at 9 a.m., and it's at the Senior Center at the intersection of 6th and German Street. No registration is necessary, and you can just show up and go. You don't have to have already done any of the Wii Bowling or any of the events, so we look forward to hopefully seeing you there in the future. We're also starting our new focus on nutrition. I have an orange with me today because I'm working on getting my five servings of fruits and vegetables each day. I hope you are too. If you have any questions, always feel free to visit our website for future events. We're still doing six walking clubs throughout town. Two on Monday, two on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, and one on Saturday. Again, visit our website at heartsbeatback.org for more information. Thanks and have a great week. Thanks, Betsy. Okay, Joe, let's plate this up and see how it looks. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, cracked pepper on top of the tabbouleh. Okay. It's something that, if you like it, a little bit spicier. Now, the cayenne pepper will give it a little bit of a kick. Yep. And again, what I always recommend is start with the basic in the recipe and then make modifications from there. Yeah, it looks great. And this was a really pretty simple recipe for two meals here. It's very simple. Actually, three. Don't forget the breakfast. That's right. And then with soup, oh, we have holes in that ladle. Okay. That's all right. We should be able to, we'll make it work. There you I go. have this okay. Now, Joe, when will you be holding your book signing, and where will that be? Um, it's going to be through the Community Ed, and it's going to be November 4th. Okay. And that's located where? I think it'll be right in uh, the New Ulm schools. Okay. I think that's usually where they're going to hold them. Good. So that's it. That is a great-looking dinner. Well, we appreciate you being here. We wish you the best of luck with your book, and I'm sure that we'll enjoy your recipes. So thanks for bringing them. Thank you. Thanks for having me, New Ulm. And that's this week's episode of What's Cooking, New Alm. We look forward to seeing you again next week.